Hello friends, it's Miss Julie. I have a story that I chose for you at the library and I'm sure you're going to love it. So let's get started. Pizza, a slice of history. Oh my goodness. Look at that mouse. This is a pizza. And this is a pizza, French bread pizza. And so is this, a mini bagel pizza. And yes, even this is pizza. This is a pizzeria. That is a place that sells pizza. And this is a pizza zole, a person who makes a pizza. This is a pizza rat. That is a rat who likes pizza. In the United States of America, we eat 350 slices of pizza every second. That's a lot of pizza. How many have you eaten? That would be hard to count. All over the world, people love pizza. But where did it start and when did it happen? Who made the first pizza. Some people say it started in ancient Greece. The Greeks would cook a flat bread topped with olives and honey, which they called kankutos. But is that a pizza? Hmm. Others say it was the Parisians, the soldiers at the Darius the Great, will cook a shallow crust directly on their shields. Pretty cool, sure, but is that pizza? No, everyone knows tomato for pizza, and the tomato comes from Italy. Actually, the tomato does not come from Italy. Tomatoes are thought to be originally from Peru. It didn't come from Europe until the 1500s. But for centuries, most Europeans thought tomatoes were unhealthy, even poisonous. Many people refused to eat them. But in Naples, Italy, people did cook with tomatoes. They added tomatoes to many Italian recipes, including a dish they called pizza. He made the dough with flour, yeast, water, sugar, olive oil, and salt. He topped the dough with tomatoes and cheese, and then he cooked it in the oven, heated with wood, burning wood. He was most famous for making the best pizzas in Naples. In 1889, King Umberto and Queen Magriarda visited Naples and they learned about the amazing pizzas. The story goes that Queen Magriarda and Espiato bring her some pizza. And this was the first pizza delivery. They came up with three different pizzas and the queen loved them all, but her favorite was topped with tomatoes, mozzarella, cheese, and basil. The colors look a lot alike the Italian flag, don't you think? They named this pizza after the queen and today we still call it Pizza Magriada. The popularity of pizza soon spread across Italy. And when Italian immigrants moved to the United States, they brought their love of pizza with them. 
Between 1880 and 1924, four million Italians moved to the United States. Aren't you glad they did? This is Gennaro Lombardi. Many people think that his pizzeria was the first in New York City. Have you ever been there? Pizza became even more popular in the United States after World War II. American soldiers returned home from Italy and they brought back a hunger for pizza. Soon pizzerias had opened all over the United States. Each region found a different way to make their pizza. Oh, New York. They considered for large slices, chewy cheese, and a thin, flexible crust. Chicago style pizza is very thick and often called deep dish because the deep pan in which it's cooked. Philadelphia may be known for cheese steaks, but they can also make a unique pizza called a tomato pie. It has no mozzarella, just sprinkling of pecorino cheese. Detroit pizza bakes their pizza in a rectangle pan, which gives it a distinctive shape. California style pizza has a crust similar to pizzas in New York, but toppings include barbecue chicken, goat cheese, eggs, even avocado. What pizza do you like where you live? Today, people make pizza all around the world, and they make it their own way. Different cultures make pizzas with unique doughs, sauces, and toppings. In Russia, they enjoy a pizza top with four kinds of fish and it's served cold. Have you ever been to Costa Rica? You should try pizza loaded with shredded coconut. In Japan, sometimes people top their pizza with mayo, combination of potato, bacon, and mayonnaise. In Brazil, it's not uncommon to see green peas on pizza. Wow, I have never tried any of those. Have you? Oh, look, now they show you a recipe on how to make some mini toaster pizzas. Did that story make you hungry? It did for me. Well, if you enjoyed this book, you can go find it at your local library or another story about another type of food you may enjoy. Come back next time to Miss Julie's Virtual Preschool and Crafts. Bye, friends.